Locusts are a serious problem in Africa. Wherever millions of locusts fly, agricultural products are eaten up. So how do African farmers deal with locusts destroying crops? Please watch this video until the end. Most of the fields and farms are facing a challenging situation, locust attack. Known for their insatiable appetite, they eat everything they come across as they go and leave not a single patch of vegetation untouched. Even mango trees in flowering season, an important source of economic profit cannot escape the attack of the ferocious locusts. Even thorn bushes, often the property of goat farms, cannot escape their dominance. The situation became increasingly serious, causing goat farms to move to avoid locust attacks. All their efforts to maintain food sources for the goats face the risk of being completely lost due to locusts consuming them all. This is a situation that requires the creativity and solidarity of the farming community to find ways to control locust swarms and protect their food sources. Using grasshopper harvesting bags for chickens isn't only an effective way to provide food for chickens, but also helps optimize their nutrition. Grasshoppers are high in protein and are a good source of fatty acids and fiber and provide minerals such as calcium, iron, and magnesium, vitamins such as vitamin B and D, all these ingredients play important roles in maintaining the health and development of chickens. However, it should be noted that using grasshopper harvesting bags for chickens also has its disadvantages. One of the weaknesses of this method is that it is dependent on the natural situation of the grasshoppers. This means you must learn about the habitat of grasshoppers to manage their release and harvest effectively. You also need to monitor the density of grasshoppers in a chicken area to ensure that food is always available for your chickens. In addition, the release of locusts can also create competition with other species in the environment and can lead to changes in the ecosystem. Therefore, it is necessary to consider and implement locust releases responsibly and legally. Using grasshopper harvest bags for chickens can be an effective method of providing nutritious feed to your flock but needs to be done with consideration and knowledge of grasshoppers and their habitat to ensure the sustainability and safety of this process. Millions of grasshoppers are handled in the simplest way. Spraying grasshopper insecticide is an important part of managing and protecting farms from disasters that harm agriculture. However, choosing the right spraying method is an important decision that must consider both the benefits and limitations of each method. Below, we will learn about the two main spraying methods and determine when to use them. Hand spraying is a traditional method 
done by using a sprayer to apply pesticides directly onto the locusts. This is a low cost and easy to implement method, especially in small areas or complex terrain. However, this method is less effective and takes more time and effort. People who perform hand spraying need to come into direct contact with pesticides are at risk of poisoning and need to follow safety rules. Air spraying is a more modern and effective method. Using airplanes or sprayers to spray pesticides on locusts, this method is especially suitable for areas with large areas and flat terrain. It is highly effective, saves time and effort, and helps spray more evenly and powerfully. However, the cost of specialized machinery and equipment is quite high, and using this method can pollute the environment if environmental protection rules aren't followed. Choosing the appropriate locust spraying method should be based on factors such as the area to be sprayed, terrain, cost and desired effectiveness. Hand spraying is suitable for areas with small areas, complex terrain and limited costs. This is especially important when you are faced with hard to reach areas. Spraying by machine is suitable for areas with large areas. Flat terrain and large enough budget, investment and in specialized machinery can pay off with greater efficiency and effectiveness in managing locust swarms. Each method of spraying grasshoppers has its own advantages and disadvantages. Choosing the appropriate locust spraying method needs to be done carefully and evaluated based on the specific situation of the farm and environment. This will help optimize performance in controlling locust swarms and protecting the environment. Choosing the right spraying method can be a smart choice to ensure sustainable development of agriculture. Legumes such as mung beans, black beans, and soybeans are valuable assets in agriculture, not only because of their nutritional value, but also because of their ability to withstand locust invasions. They contain tannin, a compound that prevents grasshoppers from eating leaves. Thanks to the existence of this substance, these beans can create an unpleasant environment for grasshoppers and prevent them from continuing to harm crops. However, maintaining a healthy agricultural environment that doesn't promote locust growth is also important. This can be done through planting thick crops to shield each other watering and fertilizing plants well for healthy growth, and regularly inspecting gardens to detect and destroy grasshoppers timely. What do you think about this issue? Please leave your comments below in the comments section to let us know. And for now, we invite you to continue watching this video. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations report by 2022, 1.46 billion acres of land will be used in Africa for agricultural production and 47 permanent grasslands used for grazing, livestock, and maintain ecological balance, like agriculture in other continents, such as Australia or the Americas. Animal husbandry and meat production 
are among the most profitable agricultural products for farmers in Africa. In addition, Africa's agriculture is also negatively affected by wildlife such as elephants, baboons, warthogs, and wild birds. We are now in the north of Nigeria, where it is said to have the most goat and sheep farms in Africa. Every morning, hundreds of goats here will come out of the barn and be herded by the farmers to the pasture near the farm to graze. Unlike goats raised in Australia or the US, farmers in Africa usually just graze goats in the pastures right next to their farms. Instead of making long trips to other distant lands, this made it easier for them to control their goat herd. And of course, it is possible to avoid the predators that are very common here, such as hyenas, leopards, or African wild dogs. It is estimated that by 2022, there will be 1.3 million cattle operating on the farm, and goats are believed to be the largest livestock species in the country, with about 37 million heads, representing 23% of the total goat herd in Africa. Currently, most goats raised in Africa are for meat production. Due to the relatively outdated breeding technology, the number of goats raised for milk production in this continent accounts for only 27%. Farmers not only graze their cattle on pasture, they also often combine planting and harvesting hay to store food, and this is done only by the farmer who owns small farms, only by a small farmer operating family. In northern Nigeria, there is also a large number of state-scale goat and sheep farms, with an estimated 500 to 700 individuals sold each year. What is special is that most of these large-scale farms use a large part of the capital provided by the traders from China. In addition to Nigeria, Ethiopia is also a country with a large population of grazing goats in Africa. Currently, the number of goats being raised in Ethiopia is close to 30 million, and more than half of them are raised on farms in the north and center of the country. In Ethiopia, farmers often graze millions of goats in the central highlands, with mostly mountainous terrain. Due to the difficult terrain of goat farming, most of the goats here wear bells around their necks to prevent them from straying from the herd. These model farms make up 93% of the farms in African countries. As the bright sunlight faded, the farmers here heard their herds return to the barn to rest and avoid predators at night. Checking the number of livestock in the herd is also done daily to make sure no goats or sheep are lost. When goats and sheep are eligible for grazing, most are brought to the market by livestock farmers to sell or slaughter on the spot. In African countries, the trade in farm animals often takes place in small markets with a small number of customers. Here, it is common to buy goats or sheep for the purpose of developing new farms or increasing the number of animals available in their herd. The release of hundreds of sheep or goats usually only takes place on a large-scale farm with investment budget by investors from Asia or France. When it comes to African agriculture, one animal that we cannot ignore is the baboons. Although baboons are not found by farmers in Africa, baboons impress farmers with the negative impact they have, whose dozens of baboons have a habit of attacking agriculture. Fields and areas where their habitat has been colonized by humans other than adult baboons.
They often catch and eat animals raised by farmers, such as goats, sheep, or poultry. The guinea fowl is also considered as one of the agricultural pests of Africa. Herds of helmeted guinea fowl like to forage in the fields and their preferred food is nuts. It is estimated that there are no less than 47 million helmeted guinea fowl currently living in Africa, with the majority distributed in a few countries such as Kenya, Tanzania, and Botswana. Currently, most agricultural practices are not very modern with the use of small fields. As a result, flocks of wild birds appear when seeding is just completed, or when the harvest season is approaching, causing significant damage to farmers' crops. Like the wild rat in the United States, the helmeted guinea fowl is also particularly fond of sorghum, corn, and vegetable fields. To protect crops from wild birds, Farmers in Africa often apply manual measures, such as repelling or setting traps. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. So since we don't really have any clue of what kind of difficulties that you could be facing in your farms, please don't forget to share all the problems you're facing and uh, obstacles you're going through as this will tremendously help us with our upcoming videos.